Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. O oh God, who from the family of the servant David raised up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the spouse of his virgin mother, give us grace to imitate his uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And I pray, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. This morning, our topic is St. Joseph of Nazareth. I'm going to take our text from Matthew chapter 2 from verse 19. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who saw the young child's life are dead. Then he arose to the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achilles was reigning over Judea instead of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called in Nazareth. We have four Josephs in the Bible. The first one is Joseph the dreamer, the son of Jacob. The second one is Joseph Bashebeth. He was the heir of David's outstanding mighty man. The third one is Joseph of Harimathia, the secret disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, who buried the body of Christ in his own tomb. The last but not the least is Saint Joseph of Nazareth, who we commemorate in our devotion this morning. He was a carpenter and lived in Nazareth. He was the foster father of Jesus Christ. The Bible described him as a righteous man. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 and verse 19. This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19. Joseph, her fiance, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Here, Joseph demonstrated righteousness by his decision to divorce his wife secretly without making 
a public show of her. He was conscious of what could cost a woman being found with a child or concession before the marriage had been legally consummated. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25 to verse 28. He knew that the law required that such a person will be put to death by stoning. Yet he determined to put her away privately without giving any reason that she might escape death. And since the offense was against him, he had the right to pass it by. Let me ask you this question. Do we consider the other party as we make a decision on some crucial matters that may affect the integrity of the life of that person? Joseph was a man that was able to keep secrets. He did not discuss what he was passing through with anyone. To him, it was not a matter that should be discussed with anybody. It was a private issue and highly confidential. He made a good decision within himself. And the Lord saw him through. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, which says, But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord, appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. When we are confused or find ourselves in a state of dilemma, we should not be afraid. God will speak to us and see us through in the name of Jesus. When you have a problem or a life challenge, don't be disturbed. Don't look downcast. God will bear you out so that his name may be glorified and magnified. Another important thing we need to know about Joseph is that he lived a disciplined life in sexual matters. He did not involve himself in sexual intercourse with Mary before they were engaged. The fact that Joseph did not have any sexual dealing with Mary before their engagement is a clear evidence that no human agency was involved in the conception of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many have been abandoned as vessels of honor by God simply because they lack self-control. They are not disciplined, especially when it comes to sexual immorality. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, flee fornication. When you look at Proverbs chapter 7, verses 26 and 27, which read thus, for she has scattered many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Many homes, lives, and destinies have been wounded by lack of self-control, especially in the area of sexual immorality. When you commit sexual immorality, you slaughter your future. You puncture your destiny. When you lost in your heart after a woman, your glory is also lost. Many people have altered their glory at the altar of sexual immorality. Sadly, many have lost their salvation because of fornication. God is speaking to us this morning. If you have found yourself in committing sexual immorality, it is not too late to repent. You have a loving father who is always willing to forgive you. Why not repent and ask him to forgive you? And he surely do so. Joseph was equally obedient and always responded promptly to every directive given to him in dreams concerning the boy Jesus. 
Four times God speak to him on what to do and he obeyed. It is expedient that Christians manifest virtues that show who they are and what they profess through obedience to God's instructions. The words of this hymn are appropriate. They are apt to us. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he shares on our way. While we do his good way, he abides with us still. And with all who we trust and obey, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Joseph, Mary, his wife, and the child Jesus relocated to Egypt because King Herod tried to kill Jesus. Following the death of Herod, the Lord instructed him to go back to Israel. He obeyed, but went and lived in Nazareth for fear of Herod's son, who was on the throne. He does fulfill the prophecy about Jesus, which says he will be called in Nazareth. It is important for us to obey God's instruction from time to time. God may ask you to relocate from one place to the other. He may ask you to leave one profession and pick another, probably to save your life or to fulfill a particular purpose in your life. Every action Joseph took to preserve the boy Jesus was directed by God through dreams. Dreams are still relevant today, but we must be very careful on the type of dreams we believe, and their sources also matter. Dreams must be guided by the word of God. Any dream that does not have spiritual backing is no dream. So we have to be very, very careful because Satan is always out to deceive people, even the children of God. And I pray, do not fall into his hand in Jesus' name. Thank God for a man like Jesus who obeyed God's instructions to perfect the will of God for mankind. Let us therefore live in righteousness and obedience to perfect God's will every day of our lives. This is another opportunity to my listeners and viewers for you to examine your lives. Are you faithful and obedient to God's instructions? Have you given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, do so now, for tomorrow may be too late. Thank you for listening. Let us pray from our devotional guide. O oh Lord, we pray earnestly for your grace to obey you always. O oh Lord, we pray earnestly for the grace to obey you always. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.